In this video, we're going to take a look at our differentiation rules. So we will no longer have to use limits uh, to calculate our derivatives uh, from here on out. But in this video, we will be using limits to prove at least some of these rules. So let's start with our first rule. And that is that if C is a constant, and f of x is equal to c, then the derivative of f with respect to x, which f is the constant c, so we could also write this as d dx of the function c, which again is a constant, that is zero. So that is our first rule, and we'll go ahead and prove that uh, just so we can see this for the future. So f prime of x here, so our derivative of this function f of x equal to c is limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Well, what is this equal to? This is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, all right, what is f of x plus h? Well, that says that everywhere we see an x in our function, we write x plus h. There is no x, so the whole function is just c. Same thing with minus f of x. This is minus c again, all over h. Well, what is that equal to? That is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 0 over h. But... We are taking the limit as h goes to 0 of 0 over h. For limits, we don't care what happens at h equals 0, right? We don't care what happens here. This function, 0 over h, is equivalent to just the 0 function everywhere except h equals 0. So these two limits are the same. And the limit as h goes to 0 of a constant is just that constant. And so we, in fact, get 0 here. So uh, what we can do now is instead of doing this limit every time, if we ever have the derivative of a constant function, we know instantly that that is 0. Uh, and again, we don't have to work out this limit each time now. All right. Let's do another rule. We have a power rule for positive integers. We're actually going to generalize this in just a few minutes when we're done with this, but um, the proof, the only proof that we can do is the one for pa positive integers here. So our rule here is if n is a positive integer, then the derivative of x to the n, so some variable x raised to the nth power, where n is a positive integer, the rule here for that is n times x to the n minus 1. So that would be our derivative every single time. And here's our proof. Well, we want to take the limit, oops, sorry, I should write f prime of x then, if f of x is defined as x to the n, so I'll write that here. So f of x is equal to x to the n. So f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, which is the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h to the n minus x to the n all over h. And now we have to figure out what this is, x plus h to the nth power. So let's think about what that actually means. And we're going to work that out on a separate paper uh, just for a moment. Suppose we had something like x plus h squared. 
Well, what does that mean? This means x plus h times x plus h. How do we actually determine what that is? We take x and we multiply it by everything over here. So we get an x squared and we get a term with an xh. And then we take the h and we multiply it by everything here. So we get another xh and an h squared. But let's continue on to see what happens in more general cases. X plus, or x plus h cubed is x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. So we certainly get x times x times x. That's one of our options. But we also get this x times this x times this h. Oh, so that was x cubed. So we get a plus x squared h. And then we get this x times the h times x. So we get another plus x squared h. And then we get an x times h times h. So we get a x h squared. And then we do all of the same thing with h times all of this stuff. Essentially what this means is we, what we do is we, from each of the terms here, the factors here, we take one of the terms and we pick one of the terms and we multiply them all together. And then we do that for every possible pick that we could make. And that's really what's happening here when we do this product. So notice that every time we have something like x plus h to the n, we are going to get one possible choice of where we select x every time. So we're going to get x to the n. And then we get n choices where we just have one h. So we're going to get x to the n minus 1 times h, but we're going to do that n times, right? We could have chosen an h here, we could have chosen an h here, or we could have chosen the h here, where everything else we chose an x. Then for every other option, we get terms with at least h squared. Okay? And how many terms that we get like that, there, you can actually use something called a choose function for that. Uh, but we don't actually need to know what that is for right now. The point for this proof is we know that every other term has at least an h squared in it. So let's go back to our proof. So here we have the limit as h goes to 0 of... Well, this x plus h to the n was x to the n plus n x to the n minus 1 times h, and then plus a bunch of terms with h squared. And then we have a minus x to the n. That's supposed to be an n, not an h. All divided by h. So what do we get if we keep going here? Well, we get limit as h goes to 0 of, first off, these x to the n's cancel. And then this h now can cancel because every term has an h in it. So here we get one of our h's to cancel. So we get n x to the n minus 1. And then plus a bunch of terms with at least one h. Right? Because we had at least an h squared in here, so when we divide out one of the h's, now we have at least a single h multiplied by, every, by uh, each of these terms. Maybe we get an h squared or an h cubed, but that doesn't matter. So we get a bunch of terms with at least one h left in it as one of its factors. So if we take the limit as h goes to 0, then all of these terms go to 0. So we are just left with x to the n minus, or n times x to the n minus 1, 
which is exactly what we wanted to prove, that our derivative was n times x to the n minus 1. And that completes our proof when n is a positive integer. Now, with that note, I would like to point out that it turns out this is true uh, if n is any real number, with one small caveat that we'll write down. Um, the only thing is we don't have the capability of really proving that right now. Uh, so let's write out the statement for any real number n, then the derivative of x to the n is equal to n x to the n minus 1 for all x where the powers x to the n and x to the n minus 1 are defined. So here's our power rule. The derivative of x to the n is just n times x to the n minus 1. So what do we do? We bring down this constant in the exponent, and we multiply everything by that, and then we reduce the exponent minus 1. Uh, and that's it. Okay. There's a few more things that we want to cover in this particular video. We have our constant multiple rule. And that is that if u is a differentiable function, of x, of the variable x, and c is a constant, then the derivative with respect to x of c times u is just c times the derivative of u with respect to x. So what does that mean? That means if we have a constant multiple times um, if we have a constant multiple times a function that is we can derive, then we can just factor out that constant multiple and just do the derivative of u after that. And it's the derivative is our constant multiple times the derivative of u. I'm not going to go ahead and prove that here. Um, it's a pretty straightforward proof, uh, but it's not all that enlightening. Um, I'm going to do one more, and that is the derivative sum rule. And this is just that if we have two differentiable functions, u and v, So if these are differentiable functions of x, then their sum is differentiable. And the derivative is So if we have the derivative of u plus v, this is just the derivative of u plus the derivative of v. So we can take the derivatives of each of these functions separately and just add them. Well, let's go ahead and prove that. I'll do that here on the next page. So how do we do that? Well, we write out the derivative of our function of x plus our function, our other function of x. So the derivative of u of x plus v of x. 
this is the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, u of x plus h plus v of x plus h minus u of x plus v of x all over h. Right, so this was our function, so f of x plus h is just everywhere we see an x, we write an x plus h, so that's u of x plus h plus v of x plus h. And then minus f of x, well that is u of x plus v of x all over h. So that's how we do our derivative. Well, let's uh, maneuver some of this stuff around. If we put these two together, then this is the limit as h goes to 0 of u of x plus h minus u of x all over h plus the limit as h goes to 0 of, oh, now we can put these two together. This is v of x plus h minus v of x all over h. And, well, what is this? Well, this is just, we know that u is differentiable, right? We were given that. We assumed that u is a differentiable function. So this right here is the derivative with respect to x of the function u. And this right here, again, v is a differentiable function. That's part of our assumption. This is just the derivative of v with respect to x. So we get that the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. And the very last thing we will do in this video is to do an example uh, where we use several of these rules. So our example is to ask, uh, does the curve, um, oops, sorry, there we go. Does the curve y is equal to x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 2 have any horizontal tangent lines? If so, where? All right. Well, how do we do this? We don't want to do this derivative by calculating the limit again. Let's just use all the rules that we know. So we have y prime is equal to, y prime is just another notation for our derivative, right? We could have also said dy dx here, just our notation for that derivative. Well, let's take the derivative of y. We have three things that are added or subtracted together by our previous um, derivative sum rule. That means we can just take the derivative of each one of these separately. So what's the derivative of x to the fourth? Well, for this, we use our power rule. That means we bring down the four. We multiply four times x raised to the, and this should be four minus first power. So that is x to the third now, right? We just reduce that power by one. That is our uh, power rule here. And then we want the derivative of two x squared. Well, or a negative 2x squared. So we can factor out the negative 2. So we can factor that out and then just take the derivative of x squared, right? Because we have a constant multiple here, so we can just move that out to the front and not worry about that. Now let's take the derivative of x squared. Well, the derivative of x squared means we multiply by 2. We bring that down. And then we multiply by x raised to 1 less power. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's 2 to the first power. And now we need to take the derivative of this third term. Well, the derivative here is the derivative of a constant, right? Two is a constant, so the derivative of that is zero. So if we put all that together, this is four x cubed minus four x, and that is our derivative function. So really, we want to know if any of these have a horizontal tangent line. To find if we have a horizontal tangent line, that means the derivative is zero. So we want to set the derivative equal to zero. And this derivative, uh, 4x cubed minus 4x, we can factor out a 4x here and get x squared minus 1, which further factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1. 
And all of this is equal to zero, uh, or when this is equal to zero, that means we'll have a horizontal tangent line. Certainly this does equal to zero. And so yes, we have horizontal tangent lines. And where does that occur? That occurs at x equals zero, x equals negative one, and x equals positive one here. So we get that yes, there are horizontal tangent lines. In fact, there are three horizontal tangent lines and they occur when x is zero, x is negative one, and x is equal to positive one. And that will finish out this video.